What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, and welcome to another weekly Friday YouTube live stream where we take a look at your apps and obviously talk to an expert guest to break down all the growth strategies that are working today. And today, I'm super excited to have him back on. We did so much stuff in 2020, and I was like, I got to reach back out to Darius, see if he's willing to come back on. But Darius Mora, he is the CMO of a really cool app, Reflectly, we broke that down all last year, but if you guys are into journaling and feeling better about yourself, go check out Reflectly in the app stores. And we're gonna talk about Darius has come up with a brand new growth strategy. We talked a lot about you know, Reflectly's pricing growth model last year, so check out that YouTube live stream. But today we're gonna talk about how they've been acquiring new apps to grow. And lastly, I want you to also check out Darius's YouTube channel. That's going to be linked up into the description after this, but he's talks all about app marketing. He, I loved all the stuff that he's shared in the past about micro influencers, how they've been doing it. And so he knows a lot about UA, but Darius, welcome back, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It was a, it was a blast what we did last year. So I'm excited for this session. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. Hey, let's talk about this, man. So why did you guys sort of shift that model a little bit? Was it because you're like, Hey, you know, this UA cost is going too much. Was it because some of the changes on iOS 14? What was the reason for maybe shifting to acquiring apps instead of just like figuring out new growth channels? Yeah, so if you've been in the app world or, I mean, digital marketing world at all in, in the last couple of years, I think it's pretty clear you can see that the acquisition costs have been going up. Uh, they have been consistently going up every quarter for the last, I don't know, 10 years that I could track backwards. And it's probably going to continue moving upwards. Uh, that's just the trajectory. So, for example, a lot of times the people are flying around, look at, for example, the hyper growth of Calm or similar apps. It's like, well, we can build an app and do the same thing. But it's not possible to do it now because Back when Calm was in hyper growth or any other big app that was in hyper growth mode, the acquisition costs were very different. So the cost to acquisition and the lifetime value ratios um, made it easy to grow and scale. Now we had at Reflectly, we had a kind of hyper growth um, era as well for, for, for quite some time. But as you start to scale and go up, you'll hit a ceiling of how much money you can spend profitably. And as the costs go up and also with new iOS changes coming forward, we knew that it's going to be more and more expensive. Uh, and as the iOS changes kick into place, advertising becomes less efficient, which means it becomes more expensive. And just acquisition costs are very, very high. So a different way to allocate capital was instead of running marketing campaigns directly, we still do a lot of that. But what we started to play around with was acquiring other apps that have really good traction um, on, the, on, on the app store. So that's what we've been doing. And it's just a different capital allocation, basically, a different way to acquire users instead of buying directly on Facebook and giving money to Facebook, we acquire apps that have steady users and then we can take them over, we can you know, improve them, we can bring in other users. And at this point, Reflectly is, is more of a app studio rather than one app. I think we have about 15 products right now and all of that acquisition wow. happened in the last year and a half, year maybe. Wow, that's amazing. All right, I'm gonna share this with everybody too. So Darius, are you guys looking, I love the strategy. You're like, Hey, look, let's build a portfolio of apps. Let's not just stop being on this one app. Are you guys looking for apps that have typically good organic growth, but no revenues or like, Hey, if they have both even better, like what are, what are some things that you're looking for? Yeah. So obviously the main thing is we want a very good product. So, you know, you <laughs> have really good retention. You need to have good kind of con basic conversion numbers. Uh, we definitely look at, Number one, the organic ranking of the app. I, I mm. think the the um, um, the ranking on the app store is kind of like real estate. So we're looking to acquire the best real estate. And if you rank, for example, let's take um, keyword motivation, right? And there's a motivation app, which makes $600,000 a month off of subscriptions, for example. It's a super, yeah. super, super product. Yeah. But the reason why they make that money, I mean, you can build the product and publish it in three days probably, but they make so much money as a tiny, tiny team because they rank number one for keyword motivation and a bunch of other keywords that are really high volume. So we're looking for apps that have really high significant ranking for keywords that matter. Um, and if they make revenue, that's fantastic. I think one thing that we got really good at Reflectly, we, we spent a lot of time on optimizing um, the conversion rates and really kind of understanding how to monetize, how to get value out of the, of the product. So we don't want to touch the, we don't want to like have to rebuild it. We don't, we don't want to kind of change things too much. We don't buy things that people already love. And then maybe we can bring in more users with our marketing or we can kind of adjust things here and there. Um, but that's what we're looking for. I love it. Look at all this stuff, man. 
yeah, that's cool. some of the acquisitions we've we've done, and it has been it's been a wild journey. <laughs> You know, I, I love this idea too. And for those who are just trying to get into the app space, maybe it's their first app rather than building the first app. Like you said, the, if they rank well, that they're taking up real estate, they've done sort of the hard work. And so if you're seeing holes in the app, maybe, you know, all about UA, maybe, you know, all about mo monetization and you could bring, how are you finding these? Cause I feel like that's the hardest part. Maybe that's the secret sauce there he is, but like, it's the hardest thing to find. Like, are you just searching for big keywords and then, then finding the apps that you're like, Oh, this has potential here. Yeah, it's surprisingly difficult. Like you would expect that there would be, I mean, there's a bunch of marketplaces, but they're not very good. And by the time somebody puts something in a marketplace, they probably overvalue it in their mind. So the way we're doing it is just manual outreach and just kind of manual one-on-one -on -one combat, as Gary Vee calls it. So just reaching out and just taking as many calls as possible. It is surprisingly difficult to find owners of some of these companies. Uh, and surprising, it, to me, it's surprising how many like there's you know, companies that are apps like one man or one woman companies that are making, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 K. And, and for some of them, it's still just a side project. Yeah. Um, so it's not super active. It doesn't even like check to the communication. So, um, so just a lot of outreach. Yeah. Like, yeah I try to do, there was one, there was one app I tried to reach out to and it hadn't been updated in like years, but they were just like ranking really well for this keyword and no reply. <laughs> it's just like yeah. crickets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's like sometimes just the email addresses are outdated. Which is, yep. uh, it, 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 it's surprising. I think there's maybe maybe a little business the kind of marketplace potential idea here to just yeah. list apps. Cause there's like micro acquire and similar marketplaces, but they're all aimed at kind of SaaS and apps are a bit of a different to look what metrics you look at and what things are important. And there isn't really a marketplace that kind of makes this easy for for the sellers and the buyers. So there's nothing out there yet. Have you guys checked out Fliptopia, Flippa? I know I've sold a couple of things on both platforms. You checked out any of those marketplaces? Yeah, we've looked at them, but it just in terms of when we look at what we think is the yeah. value of a product versus what is listed on, uh, we kind of uh, need to talk to the people and, and do the outreach. That's how we get uh, the good acquisitions. Yeah, I think that's the best approach anyways, because those type of sites, I mean, they're probably, there's a reason why they're listing it, right? Like maybe they don't right. have the organic reach or they don't rank really well for a lot of these things too. Cool, man. Yeah. And Joe mentions Joe in the comments, Zynga bought a solo devs portfolio. It was a solitaire acquisition. I remember that for 42 million. So very similar strategy. All right. I want to say hi to a few people, Joe. What's happening? Howdy, Steve. Excited for this one. Adrian from Celtic Whispers, Kalyani. How's it going? And then we've got Dominion. And then Joe asks, is this a similar strategy to those ad-free, IAP-free solitaire games? They try to grow to enormous user base to get acquired. What do you think? I think if you are a kind of an app studio or if you have a bunch of products, or you even want to, there's, there's, yeah, there's a couple of different uh, exit scenarios. Um, and so it's hard to figure out what's going to be in the future where, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a, a bunch of different avenues we could go. Right now we're focusing on building a just best possible business that we can build. And we find that right now it's through acquisitions and building a portfolio. And we do have, so Reflect Me is obviously about mental health and mental wellness, mental fitness, what we call it, yeah. in the health and fitness category. So a lot of the acquisitions are in that space so that we have a similar App, they're similar apps are not competing. And then once we have, you know, Reflectly has uh, tens of millions of users. Uh, I yeah. stop counting. But when we acquire an app, we can just, if, if there's a similar category, we can bring in, you know, all those users and then we can take any app and just make it massive. All right, Darius, maybe you know, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you this. So you, you share what you want to share, but like what happens next after you acquire it? Is it using the Reflectly user base to bring in more users? What are you guys doing tactically after acquiring? All the paperwork's done, all the headache. <laughs> yeah. The hard work is done. <laughs> so what what we do, we, we kind of look at the entire app, like kind of uh, start to finish the user experience and um and we look at kind of the numbers. And if there is anything, if there's a bit of a leaky bucket, maybe there's not a very good conversion on like install to start trial or start trial to subscribe or retention is not ideal, then we'll try to fix some of those. In general, we try to we, we want to buy apps that are already doing really well. But if any of these is kind of, if the, if the bucket is a bit leaky, we'll, we'll fix those. Um, and if not, then we can put it into a portfolio of apps and start driving some traffic from other apps, start driving traffic from our user acquisition team um, and start to, to, to grow that generally. I love it.
Okay. Let me get into a question from Ram. Darius, have you found problems with the transfer on iOS, specifically involving CloudKit and the small business program? You're shaking yeah, your head already. <laughs> uh, yeah. The whole, the whole transfer of apps with Apple, is, we actually stopped a couple of deals. And one of the first pre-screening questions I'll ask before we even get into the first time of acquisition is whether or not people have used some of the Apple features and it's the iCloud and the, the sign in with Apple and some of these things that make a transfer really difficult or impossible. We have had to do some crazy things. Also legally, depending on where you are, we've had to, for example, establish a new company for the seller, transfer the apps to the person and then transfer it to us. And yeah, so if, you, if you're selling as an individual, um, it's, it can be really difficult. And yeah, with the new, with the new program, this hasn't, hasn't happened to us, but I have spoken with other people in the industry and they have, uh, somebody has bought an app or a person has sold an app and they were in, uh, they had many apps, but this was one of the apps that sold and they were in the small business program where they, they had a small um, 15% fee instead of 30% Apple fee. And when they sold the app, um, they had to go back to a 30% fee, even their revenue was actually smaller afterwards. Um, so yes, it's definitely, oh. that's, that's been a headache and few deals have we've lost and, and a lot of deals we couldn't even start because of the Apple issue. So if you are, if you have apps or if you're building apps or considering definitely um, read up on what are the requirements to transfer apps and make sure that you don't um, you know, mess up your your acquisition before you even start. Wow, that's crazy. So you saw the developer, let's say I'm the developer, I sold the app to you guys. And then because I'm selling it, I now get out. I'm no longer a part of the small business program. Exactly, which is wow. it's crazy. I, I think that's a bug that they haven't been able to fix. They just they haven't thought of the scenario. They haven't fixed it yet. But I know developers who have lost the privileges, oh, uh, which wow. really sucks because you like there's nothing. It doesn't say anything in the developer program, and they don't they don't like warn you or anything. It's just that's that. So I think it's a bug they're going to fix. It makes no sense. It would be like that. But uh, yeah, that's it's one of the issues. The the signing with Apple and the iCloud. That's a big big issue. Uh, I, I think. It, for some of the, I don't remember exact technical difficulties. If you read up, you can just Google it. Mm -hmm. But I think if you've used iCloud um, for some of the storage for the user data, it's impossible to transfer the app no matter what you do. Um, so just be careful. Are you guys looking, is there a preference to iOS? Are you, do you not care about Android, iOS? Do you want apps that have both platforms? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, generally iOS is more profitable. So when we look at a lot of companies that have both platforms, usually about 25% of the revenue comes from the Android. So if the Android numbers are good, that's that's great. Um, there's just another way to diversify. If you are too heavy on Android, I think that's a bit, um, it's a risky in a way to have business on one category, one platform. So uh, we don't really discriminate. What kind of, what, you know, what we look at and what matters to us is, is how it's written and, and, and some of these things are working. Mm -hmm. We have built Reflectly in Flutter and we're super happy if somebody has a product in Flutter that just makes it easier for us to transfer. Um, otherwise, either we have to rewrite or we just have to go with with whatever it's, it's written. But obviously, we're still fairly a tiny company in terms of employees. So there's only so many resources we have, and, and that also puts a limit on our position. If in Flutter, for example, it's easier for us. So, um, yeah. Darius, I know we talked a lot. I loved your micro influencer strategy that you shared last year. Are you guys still doing micro influencer marketing just out of curiosity? Or you're like, hey, no, 100% my time figuring out what apps to acquire. Yeah, that definitely works still. So um, we have a few more members on the team and we have some super talented um, people that are working on that. We have um, uh, Ryan that came over from Revolut and um, Philip that came over from Facebook and, and they've been running a lot of that stuff. Uh, and we still have, we're using the the, a similar strategy now it's a bit more optimized and we just have many more creators on a team and, and uh, but it's very similar content that we put up that strategy definitely works and we've tried it with other apps that we've acquired um once you hit our scale it's just difficult to keep up with the with micro influencers um but it still works so i've spoken with companies and and and, and i know that it still works all right you test me all right i'm going to recap the strategy really quick and like 20 seconds. All right. So you Darius, what they do is they almost have a full-time person reaching out to micro influencers and they're anywhere from like, and Darius, you tell me their exact numbers, but like 10, 15,000, you know, like it's not like huge micro influencers, just smaller. What they have them do is create content around the app. And then they use that content for their ads and that those ads outperform any of the ads that they can create on their own along with, you know, getting them to share, which is just a bonus, but mainly because the ad creation is so much more valuable.
Am I right? Yeah, I do. You, you got it pretty close. Yeah. So this is one of the one of the main elements of our hyper growth where we really kind of went up. I like it. when we saw the hockey stick graph, this was part of that. Um, nice. And and the idea comes from the fact that big, really big influencers are overpriced because their audiences are so big and they don't have the core demographic. Um, and also, just it's difficult to get creatives to work. But what we've seen that what outperforms the best if you get micro influencers on board. And yeah, so we do about five to 20,000 followers on Instagram, for example, an equivalent <laughs> similar on other platforms. Because at that point, if they're sub 5,000, they just, it's not, they're not really spending time on Instagram and they don't care about it and they don't answer email. If it's north of 20,000, they're asking for too much money. So five to 20,000 followers approximately, and they'll reach out and we just say that, you know, can you make this video? The important thing is that most people pay influencers for the distribution. But in my opinion, distribution is not really worth it. What we pay for is the creative content. Mm -hmm. So they post the video online, which is great, and we get some views, which is okay. But what we really care about is getting the content and then running it as Facebook ads or Instagram ads or TikTok ads or Snapchat ads from our account and then being able to optimize and scale that. And if you do this enough, you'll find some creatives that work really well. And it's the specific ads that the creative that we got from influencers that I, I wouldn't run because when I saw them, like sometimes the, there's a weird tapia filter, kids are crying in the background. It's all shot in a really weird way. But that's exactly the content that works the best because it does not look like an ad. It, it doesn't look like it represents the brand very well because it's not, it, that's not meant to be. It's just meant to be user-generated content. And it's kind of basic psychology, like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll buy from people we trust. We trust people that are similar to us. And user-generated content like this yeah, it's much more similar than any ad you can design. And I've tested, you know, hundreds of creatives when I was running it myself. And this always outperformed anything we could design in-house or get somebody to design. Wow. Love it. That's essentially what I said. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 All right, Darius, I want to move on to take a look at the audience apps. And so if you guys are interested in for uh, us taking a look at your apps, we've seen some tremendous success of apps we've audited just live on this YouTube live stream, 5X, 12X revenues from that. So just go check out appmasters.com slash audit, the free one. There's a free one that we do on YouTube and there's a paid one that I do just one-on-one -on -one with you as well. All right, Darius, do you have a dad joke ready to go? I have two. I have okay, two. good. Do you want, okay, you're the guest. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Okay, now that we're going um, to we're going to be playing for beers, okay? So we're going to play for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start or you want me to start? All right, I'll start. Okay, go for it. So I got one uh, that's about online dating because that that's in, some of the most profitable apps in the app store are, are the one dating apps. So I thought this would be a relevant one. So I have advice for all the people who are out there swiping. And I would say, stop looking for the perfect match. Use a lighter. <laughs> I like it. All right, I'm going to stick on this dating type of thing too, all right? Because I have one of those. All right, I have a question for people with OnlyFans. I have a question for you guys with OnlyFans. Why wouldn't you just get an air conditioner instead? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I was like, I was telling that to my son. He's like, I was like, do you know what OnlyFans is? He's like, no, I have no idea. I'm like, good. <laughs> <He's such a laughs> all right we got an app from arthur and he said he just wants to he's in test flight right now and it looks like it's a writing app and so we'll i have the app rolled on my phone right now and we'll take a look at that tons of apps here okay so it's called minimal let's take a look all right darius you can lead tell me what you want me to do what do you think about this so all far because right. i really like the reflectly on onboarding so i don't know if there's stuff that you want to say on the onboarding process here We've, we, yeah, we've spent a lot of time on onboarding and reflecting. I'm not the one designing the onboarding. We have some rockstar team members, but I'll, I'll, I'll give them a best shot. <laughs> so uh, right off the bat, yeah, minimal, just like minimal, blah, blah. Um, okay. I, it's very simple. Landing pages, not much else to say. I think a lot of times when people see sign in right at the very beginning, like you're asking them to commit mm. at the beginning, it can be scary. There is a skip button, but mm. um, uh, it would be something interesting to ex experiment with how it is doing a, a, a sign in at the beginning or at the very end of the onboarding of the tutorial experience. A lot of times mm -hmm. we've seen that when you ask them to uh, kind of the formula is like you want to first give, 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 and then ask. Because right now you're asking them to give you data. Yeah. So you want to give them a bunch of value and then maybe try to do this at the end, just an idea. And it'd be a good reminder, like just in case people don't know what this app is, just to be like, hey, what is this? So just said, get started with minimal and join the community for thoughtful, committed writers, where it's be like, you know, Tell me what the app is, is again, and then have me 
sort of sign in. All right, so I'm gonna try skipping and see what happens. Okay. Oh, okay. Look, now they hit me with this. Might be good to flip that, don't you think? What do you think? Yeah. 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 Well, see, yeah. So this is good. I like this. And this might be too many. So a friend of mine, AB tested like how many screens he had. I think he went from four to seven, or he went from seven to four, and he saw an increase in subscriptions just by like lowering the number of screens. So I do like this, yeah. but five seems like a lot. Yeah, there. I think there's kind of two main schools of thought in terms of yeah. this. Either you make it very brief and very simple, it's a three screens, and then you do a subscription, or you can make it longer, but then it has to be interactive and valuable. So a lot of fitness apps they'll need like your data and they'll calculate your plan, and they might have you know fifteen, I don't know, ten screens, fifteen screens, and that's fine. But it has to be very interactive. You have to be getting value out of it and entertaining. If you like, you wouldn't get users to swipe through ten screens like this. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea. Okay. Yeah. I love this, this onboard. I think this would be more interesting to see Arthur versus you hitting me with the sign up and just a few little texts. Oh, what do you think about this? I like the, I like the examples. Okay. So these are, okay, let's see. So, so this is examples of how you would write. I think notes, this right? is what welcome to minimal part one publishes website. So I guess they're telling me certain things, but I might be able to edit this as well. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, my my first impression is on that page, I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know what this is. You have okay. to kind of click through to make users think. That's never a good idea. So what we find, for example, if you go through reflectly flow, you get into the app, you get the basic onboarding, and then we'll take you step by step. We'll kind of hand guide you through doing a journal entry. So we'll actually, and that's for the onboarding, is you, and you have to do it. So maybe I can see on the bottom right, there's a plus button. I assume that yeah. you can add a new. No, so maybe I would kind of guide users in an interactive way to, to do it. Otherwise, yeah. maybe it can be a bit confusing when you throw users in the app and be like, best of luck. Yeah, and I, I think it's reminding me of when I don't have it on my phone, but like this particular phone, but Clear does that too. When you they do land you on something like this, and it's like it, each part says swipe to Clear, and then you they make you swipe, and then like tap right. to add a new one. So you're like, there's instructions here. So that might be a better way of like having these and be like, hey, here's how you put bullets, like bullets, blah, blah, blah. Cause yeah. I'd be like this part, like the formatting to do, you can do all this stuff. So maybe break it yeah. out and a little to bit. To be more. honest, like as a user, I don't really want to have to like read manuals on how to yeah. use an app, right? Like it should yeah. be simple enough where just like go and start doing it. If I have to read anything, I'm going to skip out and, and, and I'm out of it. Yeah. And there's, like, I don't know what it's called, but designers use the concept where they introduce information to you in small bits when it's important. So right now it's not it's not important for me to know how to like change the font and all these things. Right mm -hmm. now it's important for me to know how to how do I start a note, I guess, and then how do I finish a note. And then you can give me kind of more and guide me through the process more and more, but I don't need that right now. It's and it's overwhelming to users. So you want to introduce information gradually. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have A B tested, but one of the things I'm missing, I don't know what Arthur, your subscription plans are going to be because i'm assuming it's a subscription based app but essentially you know one of the elements that we've always said is definitely have that pricing page during that onboarding flow so it's but especially after i hit done through those five screens you show me that and then one thing that i'm missing here is the premium features like where where can i go and pay you more i know some people say look you write three and then you eventually get it but what if i write one and i'm you know like i want to buy from you so make it easy for people to buy here too on the screen yeah, definitely. You'll see, I think most of the people will subscribe to whatever you have doing the onboarding. So make yeah. sure that you focus on that. Are you guys seeing that too? Because we, we had somebody on who saw 68% of his in-app purchases come from the welcome flow. And then about 25 came from this screen here. And then a tiny little less than 10% came from this like settings page. What are you guys seeing yeah. on your end? Yeah, definitely. Most of the products that I look at, they have the onboarding is probably the most significant part where you get subscriptions and you get people yeah. on board. Very, very few in the settings. Nobody goes at, 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 <laughs> and nobody goes there. Yeah. Yeah. But overall, really good app. I mean, Joe likes it. Beautiful illustrations. Joe says very confused by this screen. So Joe agrees with you, Darius. Like he has no idea what's going on here too. Yeah. It's not actionable. So that's the one thing to be actionable too. Maybe you just want people to write or here's all you can do with minimal. And then you include everything in one, but it does feel like a manual too. All right, yeah. Darius. So round one, D, Kalyani says D, that's you. Ram says you, you're winning. Okay, we only got three votes. All right, come on. <laughs>
I gotta like beg people. I'll take to vote. It. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> You're winning so far. All right. I want to say hi to Andy's here. What's happening, Andy? Jojo from all the way from Australia. We got another Bart's from Australia too. So it's like 2 a.m. over there, man. Okay. Andy asks question: If our app has a strong social responsibility impact, what's the standing approach, policy, rules on stating this in an app description UI? Do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, so I talk to a lot of apps that have a really good mission or they are focusing on sustainability or ethics or, or some way, um, but they're not very good at, a lot of these have kind of started with the app with a great mission and great idea, but they're not very good on the business side and the growth side, and then they miss out on these opportunities. So if you are targeting a specific community, for example, you're making a vegan app, then you would have an amazing vegan community on Instagram or other social. And I would definitely make that the core of the business and then try to get the first users through those communities and get, get the sharing going and, 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 um, and, and get traction for the app that way. So if, if it is, ideally, if it's a, about a community you can target, I would just go all in on that community and, and make the brand and the product all about yeah. that. Otherwise, make sure that you're, you're good on the business side, you don't forget it, because just having social impact or a good cause there's so many apps that are that have amazing causes, but they just never get noticed. Yeah, I agree with that. Like you, you have to be really huge to be like, oh yeah, I'll do that because you. I think people think that because they have a social imp impact that customers are just going to gradually be like, oh, I give ten percent of my whatever you know proceeds to whatever, and it's like that's not a big win for me. Like you, like Tom's shoes, like they they made cool shoes first, and then the yeah. people started caring about like the social impact of it. I think. Andy, if I'm also understanding your question, like if you want to try to state this, I would definitely try to do this in the screenshots, the UI. I've worked with a couple of different like carbon neutral type of apps and these social impact type of apps. And so we try to play that up as much as we can because we do want people to know about it, but don't think that's going to be like the main reason people like hop over to you in a way. Yeah, that alone Here. is not the thing. And, and you mentioned yeah. Tom's shoes and there's just example everybody mentioned because that's the only really kind of big brand that, that they were kind of new at this. Like nobody did it because they did it. They got all the press, and that's why they grew so much because they got all because it was new. But now there's yeah. so many companies doing it, which is I mean it's a good thing some companies are doing it. But you will not stand um, outside, and you will kind of not be noticeable just because of that. That's a great point because you know like Amazon with the free shipping, like what? Now it's like we expect it, and then the Zappos with like the 365 or return shoes type of thing. It's like no, we, we expect it now. So you kind of have to be new. I like that. Yeah. That's a good point. Kalyani says the homepage is very minimalistic with less. Okay. I like that. And then Subgro is here. Hey, Subgro. All right. Darius, I, I do want to talk about monetization a bit because, you know, you kind of mentioned like, hey, we took a look at the app, figure out after you acquire one, are there any holes? What are some of the key monetization tips that you feel like, okay, I acquired an app and maybe most apps, subscription-based apps are missing? So I would, I, I would almost say, the the onboarding i always think of the onboarding as a, as a separate product right and i think you should have as much attention as a separate product a lot of times a lot of times people will build an app and they just do like they'll, they'll check a couple examples of onboarding do a couple of screens and then leave it out there and then for, especially engineers will over engineer the product but leave kind of the onboarding and that experience uh, and they just kind of work on other things there's so much value to be extracted out of the onboarding there you get you'd be really surprised how much you can improve your conversions, you know, double, triple the numbers, quadruple, when you work on the onboarding and you test a couple of different things and, and you look at the best practice. So I would say, consider the onboarding as almost a separate product and give it that much dedication and testing. Um, this has to be at a, at, a, at a phase where you have enough scale of traffic coming in and you have something to test on. Of course, you need to have statistical significance, so you need to have, you know, some users coming in. But most apps, underestimate the amount of value there is in the onboarding because a lot of the conversions and for most apps, most of the conversions will happen during the onboarding phase. Are there certain best practices that you like to ha definitely have on the onboarding screen? You know, for me, I might be like, Hey, let's definitely have some social proof. Let's remind people what the app is all about. Are there certain things that you like, Hey, these are like must haves during an onboarding screen onboarding sequence. I would say I, I really wanted to kind of figure out like the pattern and I looked at hundreds of apps and, and I checked the numbers in, in, in app tweak or census tower to figure out like actually what's their kind of 
try to guesstimate the conversion, only look at good converting apps. And mm. from my experience, there isn't like one single best way to do it. There isn't like show them three info pages and then subscription or ask them for something. And then like, I, I haven't found a single pattern. I see that for some apps, it's that they, they throw the three info pages and then subscription. Some of just have the subscription and then nothing else. Yeah. Uh, some have paywall. So what I would just say is testing. That's kind of a, it's a uh, kind of easy answer to give and very difficult answer to execute on. But yeah. that's the most important thing. And then I would say definitely experiment on the pricing and type of subscription pages. Uh, mm. For example, if you do like no trial and just a price, it makes it much more easier to test because you don't have to wait seven days for trials to convert. And then you can test much quicker. So mm. that's a really good advantage. And, and again, I've seen apps that convert really well with trials, some really well without trials. Some they do just annual, some they do monthly and quarterly. Like there isn't best practice. There's just, and this is, what the developers don't want to hear, you just have to test like every combination and it'll take you a few months, but the results are really worth it. Yeah. Look, uh, well, I'm just going to go through reflect that. I like how you guys are like, Hey, you know, they, at, you asked me for stuff, but it's one thing, one screen, you know, I could play around with certain things. People so love this not... screen. It's still like one of our favorite screens. The color. Yeah, screen. I love this one. Yeah. It's so cool. The, the, the animations and then the reminders. And then the the pricing here, so yeah. And then you're you're testing. Looks like you're just testing pricing. No no trial. So you want to see how well it converts. Right on. Okay, We've got some questions too. So I wanted to go through that real quick. Grace says from Facebook. Grace, how you doing? Advice for converting an app from a three year old in app purchase base to subscription. So Grace has an app that's been. Monetizing through in-app purchases, she wants to move on to a subscription. Any advice for her? Uh, depending on the type of the app. Um, so my advice would be, first off, do it yesterday. <laughs> yes, sir. 99% of the cases, it's a better business than upfront purchase or in-app purchase. Your subscriptions are just so good at a business. It's crazy. So I would say, first of all, do it. Second of all, um, how to do it. I mean, this is not a technical conversation, but I would say look at competition uh, and similar apps that are already doing it well. So like check their numbers in Apps Week, look at the revenue, look at the installs, you can estimate the conversion rates, um, check out the ones that are converting the best and just look at what they're doing and get inspired and do something similar. Yeah, and I think, you know, you have all the best practices, Grace. You, Darius kind of mentioned it, some of the monetization tips that we've, and we've covered this in detail as well. And I think just like Gary said, make the switch. Like it's not, there are ways technically I found having talked to some developer friends that you can say, Hey, these are people that have already bought it. So they get the lifetime, so to speak. And then you can pull app ID. So talk to a developer that and a friend of mine did the exact thing. So he's able to sort of remember and have their app, their user IDs, their is UID, I think user ID, and then be like, okay, you have the lifetime, but then make that switch, do all the best practices that we've been talking about on YouTube and then make that switch. Like Gary said, it should have happened yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. Like people, the people who've already purchased, make sure that they get to keep the privileges right. and you only charge them new for the new users because there will be a revolution. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Hey, by the way, are you, are you vegan now? Or why'd you, why'd you mention vegan? <laughs> are you vegan now, Darius? Or oh, you just brought uh, up the community just because? <laughs> My my girlfriend is vegan, so and she is the best cook in the planet. So I have been eating a lot of plain based food because uh, it just tastes really good. Yeah. But I, I'm not claiming vegan though. No. no, not yet. Okay, I, I've been vegan for a year and a half um, since 2019. It's been it's been oh, fun. Really? Yeah, yeah. What 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 motivated you to to convert? No, I, it, I I just thought it was a challenge. For, first, I went vegetarian for a month and then she's like hey i'm gonna go completely vegan because she's been pescatarian and vegetarian for she was there for a while and i was like okay sounds like fun let's try it <laughs> then that was it and i was like oh i feel great like i don't feel heavy at all so yeah it was fun yeah. definitely the, the benefits are I, I mean people should try for themselves but i have felt the improvement yeah i love it man all right kalyani asks how do you value an app to require if the app is not making any revenue but ranking decent for a good keyword it's a great question yeah that's a good question so i think we have it is rare that we would buy something that doesn't make revenue already um if we have done it is because the app is attracting a lot of users and we 
have we believe that we can start converting. But it, it is kind of when you're acquiring, like think from the from if I'm if we're acquiring apps that reflect these, like think of it from our perspective, we want to remove as many risks as possible, right? Mm -hmm. And if you have an app that's not making money, but maybe the developers would like a bigger community and, and it's a great potential to make money, then they just ask an extra risk for us because we don't know how well the companies are going to grow. So I would say if the app is going towards, like if the idea is to build a revenue model down the line, or they build it right now, so you can mm -hmm. at least prove the conversions. Like if you have users coming in, and you say, let's say, I don't know, 4%, 5% are converting from install to subscribe, and this is a great number, we believe we can scale this, then it makes it much more easier for us. It doesn't have to be huge numbers. We just have to see that the users are willing to pay for this product. If it's not meant to be a revenue app even down the line, then it's not an interesting business for us necessarily because what we want to do is gather the revenue. If it's like some strategic acquisition or there's something else, then you need to look at it from the acquirer's perspective and, and wonder why it's, it's valuable for, for them. Yeah. And then just to put it on Grace too, Grace says, thanks. Actually, I currently have both IAP and sub in one app with some success, but the user are finding it too confusing. Planning to lump it all in sub. Okay, we'll give current users full sub. Yeah, definitely do it. Grace, I've talked to you, I think. So definitely do it. Make that switch. It's taking you so long. I think it's been a while since we talked. All right. <laughs> Joe says, Reflectly onboarding is on point. Yo, very nicely done. He loves the micro interactions, animations. And then Jojo says, Darius, are you are you using animation JSON files? I don't know. That's a nerdy question. I am a non-technical <laughs> non part of the member. So I can't, I can't tell you that. Yeah, sure. me neither. Okay. And then Kalyani, I'll just add that with their thing. If the app, you're just going to make more money if you want to sell the, the app. Like you're just going to make more, more money. And, you know, it'll become an easier sell if you have revenues, right? Like if you have good ranking, improve the right revenues. I mean, we, we cover revenues a lot already. So just improve yeah. that. And like, if you have an app with good keyword ranking, it doesn't take a lot of time or money to build the subscription yeah. page and do this journey. So like, if you have an app that's already working, there's nothing really stopping you. Uh, so don't wait um, and kind of, you know, sell the potential of the app, start doing it and then sell the conversions of the app. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. And I mean, that those are the types of apps I get excited working with. And I'm like, oh, you already have downloads? Oh, you're already getting some and you're not making any money? Yo, okay, let's fix it. That's easy fix than trying yeah. to be like, no revenue, no downloads, no nothing. It's like, ah, a very big yeah. uphill climb. Oh, like in almost all cases, yeah. monetization is easier than retention and kind of good product numbers and, and the product itself. Like if you have a built product, monetization is easy. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you about that. So I want to make a note about this too. Actually, while we're on this, hey, do you feel like for an app that's just getting started, Darius, like what, how would you rank like the metrics to be focused on? And I'll, I'll lead it and feel free to disagree with me. But like, I'm like, okay, if you have some downloads already, like anywhere from 50, you obviously want some downloads coming in, some users coming in. But I'm like, look, focus, especially for subscription based apps, focus on the monetization. How many people are converting? Because that's more key than trying to figure out, oh, low retention or all this stuff. I'm like, get some downloads, get some downloads. But the number one metric that I'd be focused on in the early days would be just monetization. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think I used to say retention is the best metric of whether or not how good your product is, because that really tells you if you are sticking around, they're using it. But um, if, if I were to give advice on kind of building a new product, I would definitely say the same thing. Like, look at the, the like the number one number I look at is the conversion of users from from install to subscribe, and also the revenue at which you subscribe. So you can look at a kind of average revenue per user as as your one uh, one metric. Um, I would look definitely look at that and and optimize that and focus on that. Um, it will be kind of very rocky and skewed at the beginning if you don't have a lot of users, right. but if you can improve that, you can. Well, first of all. As a, as a develop, indie developer or a company, it gets much more exciting to work on a product if you have revenue coming in. Even if it's, you're selling, you know, whatever, five bucks, 10 bucks a week, 100 yes. bucks a week, it's much more exciting to work on that um, <laughs> than you just kind of to improve retention and it's like a theoretical improvement right. um, that you see in a product. So from a motivational standpoint, definitely do that. Also, if you're trying to, I don't know, attract other people or if you want to just from potentially sell the app, like it, life is just much easier when you have revenue coming in. So to focus on that. Yeah, I love it. And we usually, I, you tell me if I'm wrong. So that's why I like talking to you, Darius, is like, 
just making sure that I'm thinking about this right. But when we're looking at apps, we look like we just look at revenues over downloads and just to see, hey, if that we can get that number up, guess what? We can actually afford to pay more for installs and ramp up the marketing and bring more users in. So for me, I was just like revenue per download. That's the metric that I'm looking at. But I, I'm sure like, you know, because then includes like the whole drop off from the onboarding sequence or people user signing up. So am I right or wrong I'm thinking about this? Yeah, yeah, we all, we also use similar numbers. So ARPU okay. or average revenue per user, and then yeah. if, if that number is too low, you can dive deeper, and there's a bunch of other metrics you can look at to kind of try to identify what's wrong. All right, brother, I'm gonna try to tie you now. So <laughs> I'm gonna go first. All right, let me try to tie you. I'm, let me try to go first. <laughs> sure. All right, then we'll take at take a look at another app. So we got the dad joke again. Come on, guys, let's let's vote. Just all you gotta put is Esther Dean. That's all you gotta do. And you might be doing something else. All right. All right, Darius, my teenage son, he's 13 years old. My teenage son treats me like a god. He acts like I don't exist until he wants something. All right, what's your, what's your he's like straight face. Darius like, I'm not even gonna try to sell Steve's joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Will. <laughs> I like the competitiveness. No, I like it. Um, this is the first time I've been on any kind of show where I'm preparing dad jokes and of the two of us you're the only dad here so you should really be winning this i know it's very <laughs> sad <laughs> you got All one right, should i go okay. yeah. yes sir so what rock group has four men who don't sing what rock group has four men that don't sing which yeah. one mount rushmore mount rushmore i like it <laughs> history all right <laughs> Just put in the comments, S for me, D for Darius, who won. If Darius wins this, I owe him a beer. Let's look at Christos. I think that's his name, if I'm saying it right. We'll take a look at his app. I'll pull it up real quick. He has a time log, so time tracking, goals. Christos wants help with conversion, so impression to download and monetization. Hey, Darius, here's my thoughts on impression download. I don't actually look at that number as much because I don't know what Apple really means from impressions when they're talking about impressions. The number I really look at is product view to download. And that number is key. But impression, download to impression, I usually see anywhere from 5 to 10%. It's usually pretty small. But then the product view, which means that people are landing on this page, I'm aiming for at least a 70% conversion because they've at least tapped into this. So I want them now that's like, how do I convert them to be, what do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, this is an interesting case. Cause we actually, we bought, um, not a time tracker, but kind of a lot of like productivity tools, planning, calendar, goal setting. And like we have a bunch of products in this area, yeah. but it's interesting. Yeah. In terms of that conversion, the, the, yeah, it's tricky because a lot of people, and I don't know what the official numbers, but I think the majority of people will install an app without landing on the, the, the app page. Like they'll go right. from the, from the search tab, right to install. Um, so, so it's tricky to kind of figure out the, the, the right number. I, I mean, I, I personally wouldn't worry too much about that conversion. Of course you can, like I would test, um, uh, for example, you can I mean, soon, like in September, it is we'll be able to split test different app stores. And once we have the real testing tools, like we have on Android, then I would maybe you know just split a couple of uh, app stores and you can test it out. Without it, you don't have perfect data, and on, if you have not a lot of traffic, you're gonna have a lot of noise in that data, and it'll be really hard to figure out like what works best. I would say improve conversion indirectly. So don't work on these things if you have kind of you have like pretty basic that best practice like for the logo and the screenshots and that looks fine. Um, but I would focus more on the product because if you improve the product, then you get better ranking the algorithm, you better rank for, for the keywords and everything, life is just much better. And like we talked about, maybe focus on the converting users to subscribers. If it's a free app, focus on the retention. Um, but I would improve this conversion indirectly. I think one thing you can do that really helps in this case is mm -hmm. to, you have some ratings, so it's, it's 5.0, I don't know how many ratings, just one. Uh, yeah. So it's very important both for the users and for the algorithm to have a lot of five star ratings. So one thing you can do is you bring up the, the prompt to, to, to rate in the app for the users. That will that will improve the conversions when you are on the search page, the results page. 
to install because people want to see the writing and they want to see it from as many people as possible. Yeah, so true. And, you know, we're looking at some of the elements that I'm just pulling up reflectly, but that we talked about in the past, definitely had some social proof, right? Like you tell us that it's a journaling app, editor's choice, a lot of social proof here, the clean design, and then some elements of this. And so really well designed here. And I think that's what you can do. I'm not a big fan, Joe, maybe you can hop in in the comments. I'm not a big fan of switching colors like this. It just feels too much. I like how it's like two plain colors that you guys are really utilizing. So my eyes, it becomes easy to read. Whereas Christos, you're like, it's just too much, you know, like too many colors going on. My eye can't focus on one thing too. So have some social proof, maybe some bigger text too. I'm blowing this up, but like, it's hard to read when you have it really small on the screen too. Yeah, or a thicker font where it's a bit easier to read. Yeah. It could be, yeah, on a, on a small device, it could be a bit tricky. Yeah, I yeah, love the bigger fonts here too. Yeah, look look at this. It's just like you you want things to stand out. This is so bold. It. It's not even bold, I don't think. <laughs> okay, yeah. let's take a look at the app. Steve, I have a, I have a question for you. Yes, what sir. do you think about app preview and, and, and videos can I, in the app store? Because I've tested it and I just see very mixed results. That's what we've seen too. So we we had we did one like I forget a couple of years ago with all the ASO tools that came on and we all they all talked about it and it was the consensus seemed like test it because it's mixed results except for games. Typically they see a higher conversion with videos for games, but all other categories is very mixed results. Yeah, I never managed to make and I tested it a lot. We never managed to make videos kind of really improve the numbers. Yeah, yeah, that's what we've. That's what we've seen too. So I always tell clients, if you want to go ahead, but like, don't spend a lot of money on it because it might not work. Yeah, especially some ASO agencies will charge a ridiculous amount of money to produce these videos and they don't really work. So that could be a bummer. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because I'm like, I'm honest usually. That's the thing. Welcome time log. Time log, uh, man. You got to work on this text, man. Welcome to time log. Time log is a time goal and productivity tractor. Nobody cares. Like it's well, what's the win for me, right? Like crush your goals faster, blah, 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 blah. Lead with the benefit versus just you. You're talking about you right now, Christos. We care about us. How is this going to help me? Okay. Time tracking. Okay. Goal tracking, productivity tracking. One kind of on a, on a broader marketing note, I, I would say, um, if you know who's your group or you can kind of go niche at the beginning, mm -hmm. that'd be good. And a lot of these people will say, here's your time tracking for digital nomad or for freelancers, freelance graphic designers, time tracking. There's a lot of these tools with a big category and maybe it's an idea. Uh, it might be easier to go niche at the beginning and then broaden out because there's a lot of tools. And if you don't have a lot of money for marketing, it'll take a while before you get traction from the general audience. I love that. And I always say that to people too. And I think I had Jeremy Olson who started hours back in the day, but he was talking about just like freelancers. We're talking about, we're talking to freelancers. And so your marketing, your messaging, everything is catered to that group. And then they feel like more likely and what Darius and I talked about was that revenue, right? Like that revenue goes up because you're talking to that core audience and you're helping them. So. Cool. I don't think I needed that. That little like, hey, touch this. I don't think I needed that because it's obvious. And if let's see if it does the same thing. Timers, new log activity. I don't know what the difference between this little button, plus button up top versus this one, the bottom. Mm, yeah, the one on top right seems redundant or confusing. Uh, so it's an in-app so purchase. First time, first time we see the subscription. I looked for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I looked for it. It, it was not obvious anywhere. But I, yeah, I just so, went to the I settings mean, tab. First advice would be put that screen in the onboarding at the end of onboarding just to see what happens. Yes. Put it on the onboarding. Definitely your your revenue should start going up. I think you know we've tested this and thank you, Darius, for doing this because I was thinking like long pricing pages, long pricing pages, and I finally found Reflectly and I was like, oh, they're using long pricing page. Cool. I now have some examples. And I think what we've seen work for a lot of people who've been testing this because we've been talking about it so much 
it's converting way better. And so I would probably test that and like take a look at all the examples that we shared in the past, but longer pricing pages seem to be outperforming. We, they just outperform on the web. And so my hypothesis back in the day was, why wouldn't it do that on mobile? And luckily I found a couple apps, Reflectly included, that were using longer pricing pages. Okay. You should review um, Sleep Cycle. That's an interesting, to me, that was a very- oh, I have that app. Yeah, I use that app all the time. Okay. So there, I don't know if you if you're premium now or but but check out the 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 upsell right now. I think that's very fascinating. Okay. All right. I and like doing these videos. They're a public company, so you can read their actual numbers. <laughs> <laughs> good, good stuff. Yeah, I think this is a little confusing. So let's see, timers, Pomodoro. Oh, I can't do that either. Maybe I can just do a normal countdown. New activity. Oof. It feels like too much. Darius, you tell me. I feel like it's too much. I just want to get going. You know what I mean? Like it feels like too much info yeah. where maybe it's like first activity, go, and then I maybe go start editing it later. But sometimes I don't know if it's just me. I just want to start. Like start the thing. Let me go. Because you know I mean? in my mind, I'll be comparing this with like the clock on my phone. We just push one button and go. Yeah, I just want to go. And then just doing the yeah. countdown. I mean, I don't know how many taps that was, but just trying to start a countdown timer took me like four or five, two, three taps when I'm just thinking like, go, go, go versus yeah, anything so else. You can edit the things later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, anything else you want to add to this? That's running. Let's see if I can stop it. See, I, I wish I could stop it. How do I stop it? Mm. Yeah. Here, I feel like for apps like these, Darius, you tell me, I just feel like do some like initial user testing, like even go to usertesting.com, do something where you get feedback, like quantitative feedback from people like this, like I'm giving you now, because I'm one, just one opinion, but like, I want to get into the app. I feel like there's a lot of UI mistakes here and UX mistakes that could have been solved versus thinking, how do I convert, how do I, you know, improve the conversion download rate? Even if you did that, you're going to just have a leaky bucket. And so really focus you on, on the UX UI. And that's what led me to sit, think about like, oh, think about revenue because like, yeah, like think about it. You can convert a lot of users here. There's a lot of holes here that you can fix. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say there's a really good book called Sprint. It's by three Google employees, I think. I read it, um, yeah. Which is just generally a fantastic book if you're building any kind of new product. Um, but one thing I've learned from there, and I've implemented it in the past, and when you when you give the potential, the MVP to users, you don't need to do that much testing. After four, five, six people, you'll start seeing a pattern and they'll have the same problems. So you can actually get a really small group of people and it could be your friends, uh, ideally not friends because your friends will be too nice to you. Um, but if you can get a small group of people to test it, four or five, six people will see patterns and you can adjust it. So definitely give it to the hands of users and, and tweak some of these things. Um, I think the standard for apps, especially you, you pick the category that's pretty crowded. There's a lot of tools like this out there and the standard is very high. So, uh, people will have very, very low patience. And a lot of times you will download you know, two, three, four apps in the category, give them each a minute of attention Mm -hmm. and then decide which one they're going to start continue using. So you just don't have a lot of time. You don't have that luxury of somebody figuring out how to make the product work. Yeah, and you would know best because, you know, th these are apps that you now have in your portfolio. So, okay, got a question from Subgrow. says, I have a social networking app and currently working on my retention. Is it a normal thing to see low retention with a small amount of active users on the app? So social networks, very difficult. You chose an interesting category. Yes, uh, and the obvious flop problem is that social networks become more valuable with more people. So if there's only a few people, um, I would say, I mean, it's not a good sign that retention is low no matter what. Social networks are some of the highest retention numbers of any app category. Um, so if you're, if, you can just Google kind of app retention numbers and find a lot of examples by category and you'll see the social networks are, are really the highest. Um, yeah, it's a general problem of like network is kind of useless without the nodes on the network. Yeah, agreed. 
and we got an interview with somebody that is versus game coming out already recorded and all that but he talked a lot about just fixing the product and pivoting and figuring all that out because it's one of the hardest categories to get going once you get going great yeah. but one of the hardest to just get going yeah we have we, we acquired a a social network uh oh, you did a, nice yeah well, um and it's it's it's, it's, it's a it's, it's a very different business than a subscription app because right? mm -hmm. you can't monetize in the same way so there's different dynamics and and the server costs are going to be pretty high with the high engagement because a lot of users which is normal for social networks so just a different kind of business and it's tricky is it the vent one vent yeah 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 cool i like it here it is it's kind of a it's like a social supportive social network so think of like facebook was actually nice to you and it's moderated and it's supportive environment yeah, I've seen other apps like this, and this is great. Like, I just look at the reviews, and it's like 5.2, 4.5. That's good. Obviously, they already have traction, but it, it would be... If you're open to it, man, I'd love an intro to the developer that created it. Maybe we can have uh, them. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Steve, why don't you say this privately? <laughs> why don't you have to put me on the phone? <laughs> All right, no, well... <laughs> Either way, man, don't feel obligated. All right, Darius, here are the results of the round two. Man, you just killed me. Joe, D, oh man, Alex, Kalyani. Love you, Kalyani. Thank you. <laughs> and then Subgrow did that as well. Joe says, I don't mind the alternating. This is back to the time log app. He doesn't mind the alternating colors too much. My bigger issue is the readability of the text. Yeah, there's not enough contrast. Okay, I like that. One of the, I think one of the, the best advice for um, for doing the screenshot is look at them on like an iPhone 8 with a small crack screen and <laughs> you'll see how, what users are seeing. I like that. And then I think Omar was like, hello. He said, hello, hello back. He said, videos do not improve numbers. The sound is not that clear. Yeah, we, we said that videos have mixed results if you put an app preview video. So just want to do that. And then... Subgrow says, hey, Steve, do you have sent out an email to the app creator before that? Yeah, we do. So we usually send an email to our guests, usually on that Monday, saying, hey, here are the apps we're going to do. And then, yes, you get notified when your app is going to be there because we want you in the comments below as well. All right. Well, Subgrow says, hey, it's a mental social network app, so it's niche if it makes that big of a difference. That's good. Yeah, and, and I guess in a way that's similar to Vent, which is kind of a yeah, we call mental fitness or kind of you know that safe safe mental space. Um, so it's a great thing you're doing it. There's definitely a lot of people that need it. It's unfortunately very much an upward trend. Uh, people are suffering with this. Um, so I definitely you know go for it. Just keep in mind that social networks have different and regular tools because other apps we reviewed are kind of a tool and and different category. Yeah. Love it. Darius, anything we missed? Do you want to make sure we cover? I don't think so. I don't think it so was either. Fun doing dad jokes and the products were interesting. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. I don't think we had dad jokes when you first came on because it was like <laughs> early days of the YouTube live. So thank you for being the one of the beta testers that YouTube live. But yeah, I started incorporating that soon. And I don't know. Did we do app audits back then too? Do you remember that at all? Yeah, we did it with a couple of app okay. audits, which was a lot of okay. fun. Um, but right. no dad jokes. So I'm very right. happy that I have somebody to share them with because my girlfriend will do a lot of eye rolling. <laughs> <Bring them. laughs> uh, well, guys, what, look, Darius proved it. In, he, that's why we constantly have him back on. He's great. He's wealth of knowledge when it comes to app marketing, when it comes to monetization, when it comes to everything related to apps. He's got a YouTube channel, so go check it out. It is in the description or just look for Darius Mora on YouTube. I want you to go do that right now and hit that subscribe button. And then go check out that, the Reflectly app. And if you got anything, I mean, for the just for your general happiness too, and then just like how well they've done in terms of onboarding, pricing, everything. It is one of the apps I refer to what that is like top notch, well done in all the different categories. It is reflectly.app on the web or just reflectly on your favorite app store. Darius, if the audience wants to connect with you in any other way, do you want to send them anywhere else? Your channel is the best way. I do my best to, to be active and post there and share everything I know. I've experimented with shorts on YouTube. So I see that. YouTube, That's cool, uh, man. YouTube channel is the best way. Yeah. All right, guys, next week, we're going to have a friend of mine, Chris, who built an app from a Reddit community that helps you stop smoking weed. And he did that all because through Reddit, he had no app. He's like, oh, there's all this category about 
quit smoking. And then he's like, what about stop quitting, you know, some smoking weed? And he went to Reddit, figured out what features to build, built the app, launched it as an in-app purchase. And then based off of our recommendations, and he's part of the, the elite mastermind that I have, he moved to subscription. He 3 x his revenues there. So I think it was Kalyani. Somebody asked, oh, Grace asked, how do you transition? We're going to talk all about that. How do you build an app from a community? And then how do you transition from an in-app purchase to a subscription and three extra revenues? I would just like to, sorry, yeah, I just want to add an idea for anybody who doesn't have a product or has some product. Uh, any kind of app that's quid an addictive habit is probably a good idea. We see that as a trend. If you look at um, a lot of the accelerators that the companies they're accepting right now, uh, and there's definitely an upward uh, trend as well. So quit anything bad as an app, uh, I think is a good idea. Ooh, I love it. All right. If it's at Darius seal of approval, I love it even more. Darius, thank <laughs> you so much, my friend for coming on and doing this. Thank you for having me. It's always fun. All right. Thank you all for listening. I, I wanted that verbal. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys for listening. I will see you guys next week. See ya. Have a good